Pop em. Welcome back to the Pop em, Don't Watch em Whiskey YouTube show. Troy back with an absolute insane blind flight challenge. The River Bend Market sample pack number seven. We are ready to roll. Guys, this is not your everyday average blind flight. In front of me, in these glasses, we have over $6,000 retail price in whiskey in these glasses. So if you don't know if this is your first time, me and Joe over at Riverbend, we decided to do sample packs, and usually we do one bottle that is allocated, and it's blind, and we do not tell anybody what it is. I do the video and get the results. This is one we wanted to put together for months now. We just had to get the right bourbons to go with it. So, in the blind, A.H. Hirsch, 16 year, the legendary bottle, $5,000 retail, retail bottle in this blind. And we are going to find out, is it really worth that price? Let's get it out the way, guys. In my personal opinion, there is nothing worth $5,000. Nothing that you are going to literally piss out is not worth $5,000. I know some of you bourbon boys, y'all like to go spend insane amounts of money on some of this stuff where money's not an option, but I don't, no way. $5,000, that would be tough for me. I mean, even the best whiskey that I've ever tasted in my entire life that maybe I can think of, I don't think I would pay $5,000 for it. But we wanted to do this for a long time, so we went to get some competitors that kind of were in the same proof, in the same age range, to see $5,000 retail. And it's actually going up. I'm pretty sure it's going to be between $5,500 and $6,000 now retail for the A.H. Hirsch. So that is your big bottle in this sample pack to see what else on the shelf can, you know, I don't want to say equal it because it is a relic. I'm going to get into exactly what it is, but man, there's other stuff on the shelf, the same age, same proof. We're going to find out the blinds do not care about price, only care about flavor. So we're going to find out. Let's get into the contenders. Contender number one, you already know it. The A.H. Hirsch 16 year. So everybody in the sample pack that's watching, that was the yellow sample. Okay, so this bourbon was distilled in 1974. Comes in at 91.6 proof. It's 16 years of age. It was distilled at the Michter's Distillery in Pennsylvania. So that is not the Michter's of today. That is the original, real, legit Michter's distillery that was in Pennsylvania. This was distilled there. So it was brought in 1989 to Kentucky to bottle and, you know, finish that last year of aging. I don't know this for a fact. Excuse me. I don't know this for a fact. But my guess would be, since obviously this bottle is not you know, what, we've gone on 30 years, it's not 30 years old. So what they probably did was took all those barrels and put them in uh, big totes, metal vats, and they let them sit in there because the aging stops. I, I don't know, most people know that, some people actually don't. Once you take, this is not wine, once you take bourbon or whiskey out of the barrel, that's it, the aging stops. So you can take it in 1990, <clears throat> Put it in a metal vat or, a, or a, um, a tote, and it'll stay. That's it. It can stay there as long as it wants, but it's only going to have that age statement of when it was pulled from the barrel. That is my guess on what happened with the A.H. Hirsch Reserves. So how will it do in the blind? We are about to find out. Very excited about this one. Contender number two, Fable and Folly from Orphan Barrel. This was the blue sample. This comes in at 90 proof. Now, the age statement is 14 year, but this is a mix, a blend of Barter House, Forged Oak, and the Rhetoric Series. It's Indiana and Kentucky. Now, 
It says 14 because that's the minimum age in the bottle. If you really do your research and look into some of those older orphan barrels, there could be close to 30-year-old whiskey in this bottle, in that blend. Can't, I can't um, say that for 100% sure, but connect the dots. It is there. It is there. There's a possibility you could have 25 to 30-year-old whiskey in that bottle. Contender number three, the white label, the white sample. Calumet 16-year coming in at 106 proof. It is a blend of 19 barrels. This is from Barton 1792 Distillery. That is usually where the Calumet brand uh, sources their whiskey from. I think this is going to be a strong contender in this flight. I really do. I think it's going to have that 16-year-old oaky, musty profile that could match the Hirsch. We'll find out. The black sample. Widow Jane, 15-year, the vaults. This is a blend of MGP and Dickel. Comes in at 99 proof. And last but not least, the red label, the red sample, Knob Creek, 15-year, coming in at 100 proof. Now, this is batch two. Batch one, to me, it was very disappointing. I felt like that batch one, 15-year, might have been some of those 15-year single barrel picks that didn't get picked, that people were, you know, picking their barrels and they, you know, they declined them. They didn't pick those. And it was during the pandemic, and I think they said, you know what, we can't do picks. Let's take some of those barrels that were denied, make a blend. And they did it, sold it, did well. I mean, the sales were well. Everybody loves Knob Creek. Those 15-year picks were just out of this world. But I think that's probably what that blend was. We're going to see how it does in this epic blind. Without further ado, it's time. Let's get into it. We're going to move left to right. $6,000 worth of whiskey, guys. Big shout out to Joe at Riverbend. Man, you know, to be able to put together something like this, to give you guys a chance to be able to taste whiskey like this, that is our goal, guys. That is always our goal, to get your palate out there. You know, taste stuff that you might never have the chance to taste. A flight like this, I know it was pricey, but... Man, what a way to be able to sample some of these great whiskeys. And you might find a new favorite. That's why we do it, to show you that stuff on the shelf is better than some of these allocated bourbons. So this is sample pack number seven in the series. <clears throat> so that is, love this nose. It's not strong, it's not crazy pungent, it's not complex. But it's got that oak, that mustiness. And I knew with the, the age on all these bourbons, they all should show some age when you're nosing them, guys. When you, you're nosing your, your sample pack in this one, now most of you have already done it, obviously, because we have the results in. We'll go over at the end. But man, that, that musty, dusty oak, what a note. Tons of vanilla and caramel. Butterscotch bomb with that epic epic mustiness oak that I love a sweet sweet oak that's a good nose that's really good so whatever that is number one starting off it's got the oak tannin spice caramels vanillas and that vintage oak that's another good word for it. vintage oak really like that one all right, sample number two, glass number two. Cheers to everybody that participated, everybody watching. We just hit 1,000 subscribers on the channel, guys. Big shout out. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button, like the video. Go look at some of my older videos. You will not be disappointed. You will be entertained. I can promise you that at the least. Okay, so this is a totally different nose man that is a like a, a strong cherry oak on this one almost medicinal cherry that is interesting 
Yeah, can't, I mean, it has, obviously a lot of these are not gonna be crazy complex. Once you get old, up in age like that, lower proof, the vanillas, the caramels, and the oak are really gonna be what shows through. It's just a matter of how, you know, how does it come together? Is it good? Just because it has those notes, doesn't mean it comes together as well. But this one's definitely different. A lot of cherry on this one. So that one, very medicinal cherry, has the oak. I'm not a fan of that one. Not a fan of that one. I'm not, I have a guess of what that is, but I'm not going to guess that yet because there's three more left, so who knows what it could be. All right, into the middle. So this one has a little bit of ethanol, which is surprising. I mean, these aren't high proof at all. Vanilla frosting. I mean, that's really what I'm getting. Vanilla extract, vanilla frosting. A little bit also of that medicinal cherry again. That one's okay. That medicinal note, that cherry note, that that's when that wood, when that oak, it starts getting, you know, too oaky and it gets almost medicinal. It gets um, funky, but not a good funk. Not, not a good funk. That kind of tastes like what's going on with that one. But I can tell you right now, so far, number one, bomb. That is a just hitter. All right, number four. All right, back to now. This is another. This is a great nose. Butterscotch bomb. Oh man, that one's really good. It has some char to it now. This has got a little smoky oak char on the back end of it. A little bit of fruit. I can't pinpoint what that fruit is, but there is a, a little hint of fruit. But a caramel charred fruit. That is what I'm getting on as, and of course. Heavy oak presence. I'm also getting a little... Okay, so that is. When it got closer, that little bit of cinnamon popped out as soon as it almost took the sip. Very... A tobacco... That's... Okay, so it's like a... um, Like a cedar wood, like a tobacco note also with it. Man. So this is really starting to bring some com complexity. And I know I said... Most of these won't be too complex, but this one, whatever this is, man. I mean, it is a cedar box, cinnamon, tobacco, sweet tobacco, almost like a pipe tobacco with that vanilla note and a little bit of fruit. Same thing on the palate. Okay, so... Number four is here to compete. Wow, that one is really good. And what I love about a blog, guys, I'm getting excited. And this could be a bourbon that I totally hate in this lineup, which obviously I don't think I'd hate any of these. But I, I could get excited about this. And when I find out what it is, I'm, I would, it would blow my mind because I would never think that's what it was. But four is pretty good. All right, last but not least in the first round. So this one is, is very muted, not getting too much on this one. Get that oak. Get that mustiness, but this is um I get a little bit of that cinnamon on there too, that that um that cedar almost like a cedar wood box. I'm big in a cigar, so that, that smell sometimes if you age your cigars, you get that smell. I, I love the smell, but it's coming through medicinal almost on this one. Too much, like a cedar, too much cedar. Which is really crazy. That's that oak, that old oak. Yeah, so number five, the oak totally took over. The oak tannins, it's, it's, it, it, it was in the barrel too long. In the barrel too long. It's still good, it, it, it's good. 
but it just these two right here are automatically going to the final I can tell you that one of these have to be eliminated it's probably gonna be see but that is no you see that now you go in that second time around things change because two I put is not good but now that knows Yeah. That's, well, that's going to move on, actually. So that one actually came back with a fight and said, okay, I'm not done yet. God, you can one thing you can taste the age on all these. That's number five. This one's gonna be number four. So this one fought its way into the top three after that first go around. That is crazy. All right, we're down to the final three in the epic six thousand dollar blonde. Let's get you guys a winner. All right. I was tasting it for the hell of it, but this one automatically into the final two. That one is just, that one is, oh man. If you love well-aged, oaky bourbons, this right here is your jam. I can't believe the comp this one's nose. My God, I can't get that. Um, so what this is reminding me of, it's almost like a cream soda note, too. It reminds me of the Starlight Cigar Batch. It's finished in an, um, a Brazilian Abrenier. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it without it in front of me. <laughs> it's, it's a Brazilian wood. I mean, it is a finish that when you nose it, it's something that you cannot even compare to anything else. And this is what this is kind of reminding me of. But, you know, the nose can be great. There's a palate. This one's got some nuttiness coming out in it. Yeah. All right. Down to the final two. This is, this is tough. This is a big title to win. So let's give them each a fair. I thought I had a little bit left of these. I wanted to do a Hirsch review on its own, but I guess that's not going to happen. God, this is tough. Tough. Yep. Going with this one. All right. So, here we go. My favorite part of a blind challenge, a blind flight fight. Fifth place in the Riverbend Blind Flight Sample Pack is... Fable and Folly. That's actually pretty surprising. I thought that was going to do well. It was, I think that was the lowest proof at 90, but that didn't really hurt it. I mean, 91, 106, eh, maybe, but it did not show through in his blind. Now, I had this by itself a couple weeks ago and was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. If you like older aged oak, this is actually pretty good whiskey right here. So it came in fifth here, but... By itself, it's really good. Fourth place. The Calumet 16. I thought that was going to do a better showing. Did not. Came in fourth place. 
Interesting. See, I'm not a big um, Barton fan. 1792. They, not that I'm not trying to say they're they're bad, but for me and my palate, uh, Barton usually does not do well. 1792 stuff. I love the foolproof picks. If you get somebody that really knows what they're doing with their picks, their foolproof picks can be incredible. Fourth place. All right, we're getting to the final three. Hirsch is still alive. The Widow Jane, 15 year. So, y'all know I'm not a big Dickel fan, but obviously in this blend, it did better than I thought it would do. Widow Jane, 15 year. That is an expensive bottle, but hey, it came in third place. If you see it, I would say that's a buy. I know Joe might have some over at Riverbend left. Don't know that for sure. Don't go running in there. <laughs> he doesn't have it. All right, guys. So we're down to the final two. The Hirsch is still alive. The winner, sample pack number seven, over $6,000 worth of whiskey. And the winner, first place of the sample pack is the A.H. Hirsch. Does it? Holy shit. A.H. Hirsch does it. Wins the blind. So that means what a showing. Knob Creek 15 comes in second place. Now, look, I'm a bean fan. I like the nuttiness. I like bean. That's just me. But this was coming in a different very different on this batch two. I've never had the batch two. It's the first time I've had batch two. As I said, I wasn't a fan of batch one. Obviously, in this blind, batch two did really well. But man, so the Hirsch. Look, the blinds don't lie. I'd love to have this on its own now. But man, that Hirsch in this blind, it did it for him. It hit all those check marks. For a well-aged bourbon. Now, I know everybody's asking the question. Is that a $5,000 bottle of whiskey? Guys, of course not. Of course not. I mean, no, there's no way I'd pay $5,000 for that. I mean, maybe I could see myself with like an old scotch or Armagnac or Cognac or something like that. But just a 16-year-old Pennsylvania bourbon... If you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, that's what it is. Um, you know, but hey, I ain't, I ain't a pocket watcher. If you got it, you want to spend it, have at it. It won the blind. Hirsch won it for me. I don't argue with the blinds, guys. The blinds do what they do. It won it. So, now let's reveal the results. We had 30 sample packs, 29 are the results that are in. Obviously, I'm the 30th. Everybody sends their results to Joe, and then I do the video so everybody can see where theirs ranked, and they get to find out, actually, when everybody did their sample pack, they didn't know which color was color. This is the first time they get to see what the color is. So, 29 other people. We average it one through five. So the highest average, we rank them from there. In first place, with an average score of 2.64, was the A.H. Hirsch. So, I was in agreement with the majority. Joe, the owner of Riverbend, Hirsch actually came in last for him. So, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, guys. Came in last for him. But for me, it came in first. It did now. It did not have... The most first place votes. It had seven first place votes. Okay, so it did not have the most first place votes. Had the highest average of 2.64. In second place, with an average score of 2.75, Calumet 16. Great, great showing. I said I thought this would do well, and it did. Second place. Now Calumet 16 had the most first place votes with eight. So... It did well. It came in, what was it, third? No, no, actually came in fourth for me. Fourth.
for me, but the majority speaks second place. And like I said, the most first place votes of the, tw of the 30, well, 29, because I'm the 30th. Third place, with an average score of 3.0 even, was Fable and Folly. So it had, so this one was all over the place. It had three first place votes, but it had the most last place votes. It had 10 last place votes, and I was on with y'all on that one. Last place for me as well, so you can make it 11 last place votes for Fable and Folly, but it did average third. Fourth, with a score of 3.29, was the Widow Jane Vaults. That had nine last place votes. And then in official fifth place, which surprising to me, the Knob Creek with a 3.32 ranking came in fifth place. It came in second for me. I, I don't know what it was, but it fought to the end. Man, that would have been some shit if this would have beat Hirsch. But... The Beam product wins at nine. Man, so love doing these blinds with you guys. That is it. I don't know what our next one's going to be. This was this took us a while to put together. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Watch River Bend. Go subscribe to his Instagram. Go subscribe to Facebook, River Bend Market. Best social media in the game when it comes to bourbon and whiskey. We will keep you updated on that. Also look forward to our big, big four gate, 10 year MGP toasted store pick. Only five barrels in the nation. River Bend Market here in Madisonville. We got one. We picked it. It's toasting right now. Cannot wait to get that one. But guys, that's it. Had fun. What a great blind it was. A. H. Hirsch wins it. $5,000 retail bottle. Until next time, guys, if it's $5,000 Hirsch, if it's $20 Wild Turkey 101, pop! Don't watch.